Religion is bullshit on steroids. And when you deal with religion as often and extensively as we do, it's easy to lose track of the fact that it would still be dangerous even without the steroids, which we periodically remind ourselves of with a segment called How Bullshit Is It? So what flavor of fraudulent feculence do you have for us today, Heath? Today, we'll be talking about the Bermuda Triangle. Cool. All right. So what is the Bermuda Triangle? It's a triangle of water. Uh, like just just regular water? Well, I mean, it's salt, water. A- anything else? Uh, it's also the air above that water, part of the triangle, technically. Okay. Is there anything special about this particular triangle of water? Not really, no. And so is that the end of the segment then? (laughs) Okay, in a perfect world, it would be. But no, because some asshole named George Sands fucked us out of that opportunity in 1952 when he published an article in Fate magazine suggesting there might be something mysterious about this particular patch of water and air above it. Uh, Don't you mean something fishy? Nope. Do not. Anyway, (laughs) Sam's article (laughs) listed a number of ships and planes that had disappeared in that general area. Now, this wasn't the first article to suggest that maybe this area had a higher than normal rate of disappearances, but it was the first to suggest that the reason might be supernatural. Okay, uh, so first things first, are there a higher than normal rate of disappearances in that area? Nope. No, no, they're not. Nice. All right. We solved the mystery, everybody. That yeah. was a quick one. Yeah. Do the guitars. Yeah. No, we boy, sure did. Look, no two patches of ocean are exactly the same, so it's hard to draw an apples to apples comparison here. But given the size of the area, the amount of maritime traffic, the amount of air traffic, and the frequency of tropical storms, there's no reason to single out this region of the Bermuda Triangle as especially disappearance prone. Lloyd's of London, for example, doesn't like charge you more to ship your stuff through it. The U.S. Coast Guard doesn't pay it any more attention than any other shipping lane. In fact, when the World Wide Fund for Nature made a list of the 10 most dangerous waters for shipping, that particular patch of the Atlantic Ocean didn't even make the list. Okay, so, uh, so exactly what region of the Atlantic are we talking about? The Bermuda Triangle, Noah. Okay. Can't touch, I'm so <laughs> yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> That's a very reasonable question from Noah that should have a straightforward answer if it isn't bullshit, right? Yeah, but alas... The boundaries of the triangle shift based on which author you're reading and the point they're trying to make. You'll most often see the vertices of the triangle defined as Miami, Florida, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda. No, no particular city in in Bermuda, just the whole of Bermuda, I guess. Bermuda just only gets the... (laughs) So, okay. So, but why can't authors agree on the borders? Because at some point, somebody hit on the idea of plotting all the ships that sank and all the planes that disappeared in the Atlantic Ocean. And when you do that, it's super obvious that there's nothing special about the Bermuda Triangle in terms of frequency. So over time, conspiracy theorists had to repeatedly gerrymander that triangle to encompass a larger and larger number of accidents to go with their theory. Okay, everyone, it is now the Bermuda Ocean, and let me just say it's gotten real dangerous <laughs> got the out there at this point. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so let, me, let me play devil's advocate here a bit. Yeah, literally your job in the segment. Cool. My job is to lend the adorable heart of gold. Yep, that is. Perfect. Your job. So, and and thank you, Eli, for doing that job. So even if we accept that there aren't any more accidents in the Bermuda Triangle than there are elsewhere. Even? even uh, Sorry, no, you're right. So (laughs) accepting that there aren't uh, a a higher rate of accidents there. It's just like a number. That doesn't disprove the overall claim that there isn't something supernatural about the disappearances that do happen there. Ah, okay. So, Noah, you're, are you suggesting that there are supernatural forces stealing ships and planes from the Bermuda Triangle, but, like, their hearts aren't really in it? They're not better than <laughs> well, that. <average. laughs> Here's the thing. It's actually worse than that. Because to keep the overall rate from going up, those supernatural forces would have to accidentally keep ships from sinking that would have otherwise disappeared <laughs> okay. as well. Right. <laughs> exactly. Fucking up stuff. the average, yeah. But I'm playing devil's advocate here, goddammit. <laughs> Are you sure you're not just clumsily transitioning into a discussion of the individual disappearances that Bermuda Triangle believers tend to talk the most about? I don't I don't see why it can't be both. Okay, fair. I want to be the devil's advocate next time. I don't know. Quack, quack, quack. I'm the devil. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's gonna be me. Let's take these chronologically, starting.
starting with the HMS Atlanta in 1880. Atlanta was a Spartan-class, sixth-rate frigate of the Royal Navy. And, uh, yeah, don't worry, I have no idea what any of that means either. Anyway, it was a big-ass ship, originally launched in 1844, that had since become a training ship, meaning a ship that basically had to have the big, you know, student driver sign on top of it. And it sunk, you say? <laughs> yeah, it did, somehow. Yeah, it set sail from Bermuda on January 31st of 1880 with 281 men, only 11 of whom were experienced enough to earn the title of able-bodied seamen. And the ship was never heard from again. Huh. Okay. Well, if that's all it takes to start a worldwide legend, wait till everyone hears about the Bermuda back of every car I've ever tried to park in. Very <laughs> accident prone. <laughs> now, uh, at the time, this was a really big deal, and it caught the world's attention. Shipwrecks were the plane crashes of the day. And it had only been a couple of years since the British Navy had lost another training ship called the HMS Eurydice in the largest peacetime disaster in British naval history. So the public was kind of aching for a sequel. The Eurydice actually gets dragged into some lists of the Triangle's victims, even though it sank off the coast of the Isle of Wight. Oh, really? <laughs> which is about 3,400 miles from the easternmost edge of the typically designated Bermuda Triangle. Okay, so... but. But wait, so be, to be clear, we don't know that the Atalanta was in the triangle when it went down, do we? I, if, if it was never heard from again. We do not, correct. In fact, given that it was starting in the northeast part of said triangle and heading northeast, there's no reason at all to believe that it was. Huh. Also, there's nothing remotely mysterious about the disappearance. On top of the damn near criminal inexperience of the crew, we know that a major tropical storm crossed its intended route about two weeks after they left. And at a hearing about this disappearance, a former member of the ship's crew testified that the Atalanta was a bit top-heavy and tended to roll way more in inclement weather than it should. He even quoted the captain as saying, if she rolled one degree more, she would have gone under and foundered. Okay, so a ship sank in a very ship sinky circumstance... And, and they never found the wreckage? That's yeah. the story? Yeah, a sinky ship did that. Yeah, yes. right. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and they found the wreckage, by the way. Oh, really? In oh. April, yeah, in April, a gunboat reported seeing a bunch of wreckage floating off the shore of the Azores. And then in September, a German brig spotted a sunken wreck south of the Irish coast that couldn't be exactly identified as the Atalanta, but was pretty much the right size. So almost certainly okay, that and, was it. And for those who are geographically challenged, the Bermuda Triangle is not due south of the Irish coast, correct? <laughs> that is correct, yes. Okay. How far due? It depends on the dueness <laughs> yeah. of south or dumb -er You got to do south. You got to triangulate south with San Juan. Really south. And the island of North America. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, who's to say what is south? <laughs> Here's the thing. There are some very flexible definitions of the Bermuda Triangle's borders that would actually encompass this thing. What? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> at that point, the triangle is basically the entire Atlantic Ocean south of where the Titanic sank, so it's meaningless. Yes, the B Bermuda Equator. Yes. Exactly. We all know so, about the Bermuda Equator. <laughs> all right, so a ship known to handle poorly in bad weather hits bad weather with a crew full of trainees and is later found... Um, <laughs> Yep. Hope the next one's better. What, what else do you have? All right. Next up, we have the USS Cyclops, which remains the single largest loss of life in the history of the U.S. Navy, not related to combat. Assuming that it wasn't related to combat. This happened in 1918, right smack in the middle of our involvement in World War I. We don't actually know what happened to the ship, so we definitely can't rule out a German U-boat. Okay, so this, this one is less mysterious than the last one? <laughs> Yeah, sure is. The Cyclops set sail on March 4th of 1918 from a port in Barbados, carrying a full load of manganese ore. Now, that's not explosive or flammable or anything, but it is incredibly dense, far denser than the cargo the Cyclops was built to carry. So while it's entirely possible that a submarine torpedoed it, it's actually far more likely that it just sank because they'd put too much fucking manganese ore on it. In fact, two of the Cyclops' sister ships the Proteus and the Nereus, also sank during the war while loaded with similar stuff. In all three cases, structural failure due to overloading is considered the most likely cause of the sinkings. 
Or maybe it was like a final destination situation. Was there a log truck involved? <laughs> All the sisters are going. <laughs> Do we know about a log truck? Okay, so at this point, either the supernatural forces don't exist or they're actively trying to cover their tracks. Uh, wait, wait, what's next? <laughs> the perfect crime, Noah. Yeah, right. Right? What about the Carol A. Deering? So here we have a genuine who the fuck knows story of a five-masted commercial schooner that launched from Puerto Rico in July of 1920 to pick up a load of coal in Rio de Janeiro. It arrived with no incident, but disappeared during the return voyage, only to reappear in January of the next year, run aground and denuded of its crew near Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Explain that. Oh, awesome. Well, now, okay, so that one actually sounds like a genuine mystery. Yeah, as long as I stop now, it'll continue to sound like that. Oh. But I'm not going to stop now. See, what we do know of that journey suggests that the captain was a complete piece of shit and the crew fucking hated him. In fact, one dude was actually arrested in Brazil when authorities overheard him talking about plans to murder that captain. But apparently the captain forgave him and then bailed him out of jail and set sail with the guy anyway. When the ship was found, it had been sabotaged in several ways, and the crew's personal belongings were all missing, along with the lifeboats, also all missing. So it's almost certainly a case of mutiny. Okay, so not so much abandoned teeth as everyone got off. All ships have people who get off them. That's what <laughs> ships do, Ethan, right? <laughs> All right, so I guess there's no need for a bunch of wild and implausible theories when it comes to this one, huh? Well, no need for them, sure. But again, this one really captured the public's attention. Then Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover made a big deal of it and ordered an investigation that ultimately roped in the Treasury Department, the State Department, the Department of Defense, and the Navy. And that investigation ultimately settled on mutiny. But some journalists still suspected piracy, specifically communist piracy. Really? Yeah. The headquarters of the United Russia Workers Party in New York City at the time were raided shortly afterwards, and the FBI found a bunch of papers calling on members to seize American ships and sail them to the Soviet Union. And then, as now, a huge swath of America can't pass up on an opportunity to blame any negative thing ever on communism. Mm. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. All right, enough with all these boats. How about a change of pace with an airplane or two? All right, I'll see you two and raise you three, actually. So probably the most famous disappearance pinned on the Bermuda Triangle is the disappearance of Flight 19, a group of five Navy bombers that disappeared during a training flight on December 5th of 1945. This group was led by a veteran pilot named Charles Carroll Taylor, who was taking out his team on a pretty common practice run off the east coast of Florida. During the run... Both of Taylor's compasses stopped working and he became hopelessly disoriented. The Navy picked up a series of sporadic and increasingly panicked transmissions over the next few hours while Taylor tried to figure out where the fuck they were. About four hours later, they overheard the last transmission from Taylor instructing his men to ditch at sea as soon as the first plane dropped below 10 gallons of fuel. And, and let me just say, it's about damn time somebody's compass fucked up in this story. <laughs> yeah, but then at the last minute, Thomas Cruz comes barreling in <laughs> from the clouds. Yes. So all in all, Flight 19 lost five planes and 14 men. To make it worse, and to fuel the shit out of future claims of supernatural causes, the plane that was sent out to find them also disappeared along with its 13-man crew. Ah, oh, wow. So, uh, so what's the official story on this one? Well, the official story is cause unknown. But that's not because they don't know the cause. They just said that. By that, that sentence is the most mysterious thing about this segment so far. <laughs> yeah, okay, so <laughs> what very clearly happened here is that Lieutenant Taylor's compasses fucked up. He panicked. He got hopelessly lost. And his refusal to do the, you know, the pilot equivalent of stopping at a gas station and asking for directions got his entire crew killed. Pretty much every legitimate investigation of the situation came to the same conclusion. At some point, he saw some islands south of the Bahamas he mistook them for the Florida Keys, and he headed the wrong way. There are even snippets of overheard radio conversations where his subordinates are telling him, dude, you're going the wrong way. We know you're definitely going the wrong way. But military discipline is apparently so ingrained that these people all just followed him to death rather than turning west and going in the direction they knew was home. 
Okay, well, so if it's such an open and shut case, why would the government list it as cause unknown? Because officially admitting what happens would mean blaming Taylor for the loss of six ships and 27 men. Well, but that seems reasonable if it's his fault. Right. Yes, yes, it does. And that's originally what the Navy's report did. But later, his mom complained. What? And said they were blaming him I get it. without no, any I get real it. evidence. Yeah, I mean, come <laughs> I on. I bet you do. <laughs> Everybody's mom would do that. And since that's technically true, and since nothing is really gained by officially blaming this dead guy, they decided out of respect to his family to revise the report and say the cause was unknown. So wait a minute. So the Bermuda Triangle enthusiasts found the last tiny crack of humanity left in the American armed forces and spackled it with conspiracy <laughs> theory bullshit? Sure the fuck did. Yep. No, ma'am, ma'am, we understand. That's an upsetting story. I'll tell you what. What if we say that all the pilots were like, let's roll, and then they fought the compasses really okay. heroically, <laughs> but at the last second. All right. Pennsylvania's in that triangle, if you think, <laughs> think about it. Yeah. If you move one of them up. All right. But to what end, though? Right? Like, what theory are the conspiracy theorists promoting by pretending all these stories have some supernatural agent at their heart? Come on, Noah. You know better than that. There doesn't need to be a point for these people. The point is the mystery. The point is establishing that something happened anywhere ever that was sufficiently inexplicable to justify doubting the entire scientific model of the universe. If science can't explain the Bermuda Triangle, how can it claim to understand the universe? So... Rather than any one consistent explanation, the Bermuda Triangle is offered up to justify any number of demonstrably incorrect worldviews. And they love that. Such as? Well, uh, a lot of them center around alien abduction, as seen in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Another common culprit is the lost continent of Atlantis. Huh. The theory here is that there's some ancient buried technology that, that fucks up compasses and or creates mysterious whirlpools that appear without warning and track data to fudge it correctly. <laughs> Still other theories posit the existence of some kind of wormhole or a portal to an alternate dimension, just kind of, I don't know, hanging out around there. <laughs> I love the idea of Atlantis sinking into the sea. It's okay, my prank machine that fucks up everyone's cell phone will still work thousands <laughs> of years from today. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, prank war, blah, 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 blah. All right, so, but, but honestly, though, if this is all so explainable and the theories are all so silly, why does the idea persist at all? Well, because for most people, questions are way more fun than answers. As far back as 1975, all the claims about the Bermuda Triangle were thoroughly debunked. What's more, a skeptical author and pilot named Larry Kush showed that not only were the mysteries easily explainable, but that you'd kind of have to be going out of your way not to explain them. He showed that many of the facts presented by Bermuda Triangle proponents were easily falsifiable. Shit like saying a ship disappeared in calm seas when there was a record of tropical storms in that area on that day or saying that there was no sign of the crew when all the crew members' bodies were accounted for. It was a manufactured mystery created to sell books. And the only people who can't explain it are the people who really don't want it explained. All right. Well, I guess the only question left to ask is, how bullshit is it? Okay, on a personal note, it's reminding Heath not to base his scientific worldview on season one, episode 17 of DuckTales, Bermuda Triangle Tangle. <laughs> Levels of bullshit. Because, yes, I love that show and episode, and they, they, they give you a pretty good case for the magic. Oh, all right. All right, so I guess that it's with that scent lingering in your nostrils that we're going to leave you for the night, but don't worry, I'm sure Heath will find another shovel full soon. <laughs> Woo.